The rule engine is our custom optimizations and automations builder. It can make all changes or monitor your Google Ads, Amazon Ads, and Microsoft Ads accounts via if and then statements, conditions, and actions. You'll find that under optimizations, rule engine, view, and create strategies. Before we dive into the tool, let's understand the terminology. So the rule engine lets you create strategies. This is the highest level, our optimizations or reports. Essentially, a strategy is a group of rules. Each rule can contain multiple conditions that need to be satisfied for one or multiple actions to be applied. Let's replace these boxes with a real life example. I want to automate my search query management. That's going to be my strategy. For the rules, I may want to find sets of search terms at different levels of performance, good and low. The first rule is going to help me find converting search terms to add them as positive keywords, while the second rule uses a couple of conditions to find non-converting and expensive search terms to add as negative keywords. Keeping that example in mind, let's go back to the tool. The first time you open the rule engine, you're going to see this wizard on the top. It's a list of what we call instant strategies. This is a full library of pre-built optimizations and report that cover multiple use cases like optimizing GeoBit adjustments, reporting on closed variants, optimizations and reports for shopping campaigns, etc. It's a good idea to use those for reference when you start using the rule engine. But for now, let's create a strategy from scratch so you can see the extent of the tool. Let's click next. On this step, we need to decide at which level we want the strategy to run on. So continuing with the initial example, we pick search terms. We name our strategy. Let's call it search query management. And below you'll see more details about the actions you can apply at the level you selected. In this case, search terms. Let's hit proceed and wait for the strategy to load. This is how the actual engine looks like. To help you get started, we add a couple of rules. The way the tool is structured makes it easy to understand how it analyzes the data. So we start with the first rule. We analyze all your search terms to try to identify those that meet the criteria. In this case, we're saying, find all the search terms that during the last seven days have received over zero clicks. Those search terms that satisfy that condition will be included in our report. Those that don't will be analyzed by the second rule. The conditions in here say that if the search term doesn't exist as a keyword in the account and it has received more than zero conversions during the last seven days, I want to add it as a positive keyword at the ad group level. If you notice, this rule in particular is very similar to the example that we mentioned at the beginning. So let's drag and drop it and place it here at the beginning. So the analysis starts by finding converting search terms. We always recommend renaming the rules so it's easier for you to identify them when you start looking at the output. So let's call this converting search queries and click save. I also want to edit some of the conditions that we have here. So when you want to change a pre-existing condition or any of the conditions that you've added, you can click over the condition edit and here I want to change the date range. So instead of using last seven days, I want to use something different. You can use any of the date ranges here from the list or you can use an offset with the custom date ranges option. We click here and for example in this case we're working with last 30 days with an offset of five days. So the start date was 35 days ago while the end date six days ago. We save the custom date range and we make sure to select it from the date range dropdown. This option in particular comes in handy whenever you're using conversion attributes. And now that we're talking about that, on the list below, you'll see every attribute available through the Google Ads API, including custom conversions in case you want to optimize towards those, but also attributes calculated by optimizer because we know these are relevant to BPC experts and they have been requested by some of our customers. So things like search term and keyword similarity percent or the word count for the search term in case you don't want to include or add keywords in your account that are too long. Now that this condition is ready, we can continue to work on the actions. So we click next 
go to the dense statements, click edit, select the match type for the keyword. And we can also change the bits. By default, what we do is that we copy the bit of the keyword that was originally triggered by the search term. This is because we're using the value type single metric at the keyword level. You can use any of the other levels from the dropdown and depending on which level you select, you'll see different attributes on the list. Another value type available is constant number as well as a custom variable, which I'll show you later on, and expressions. Expressions are useful when you want to use formulas like, for example, half of the original current bid. So that can also be done. Let's continue working with a single metric and select first page bid for this example. Then you have some limits. You can define what the minimum bid is going to be. We can use the current bid as a starting point and a maximum bid. The maximum bid means that you're defining a ceiling of $10. So regardless of what the first page bid is, your bid will never be greater than $10. You also have some additional options like copying final URL, suffix, and copy tracking templates. The first rule is ready. So now we can continue to work on the non-converting search queries rule. Let's rename it here and start working with the conditions. We edit this and let's change clicks to conversions from the last 30 days, but with an offset by five. So we use the same custom date range from the first rule and we look for conversions right here. Now, instead of saying we want to use greater than, we use equal to zero. That's the base condition for this rule. Now, what happens if we want to give enough chance for a search term to perform before we decide to add it as a negative keyword? We can add other conditions. Going back to the initial example, we want to find expensive and non-converting search queries. So we can add another condition for that and say whenever cost is greater than an amount. Here I want to show you how to use custom variables because they can come in handy in the future. So we select the custom variable option, we modify custom variables and add one here and we will call this minimum cost. Let's say the minimum cost should be $15. Let's save this and use the custom variable now. This feature is very useful in a couple of situations. First, when you want to use the same value in different parts of your strategy. That way, if you want to change it at some point, you edit the custom variable instead of changing a constant number multiple times. And second, when you want to adjust certain values as you look at the results page. And this is something that we'll see in a moment. So let's click next. Now we have a couple of conditions here. All we need to do now is change the action. We click edit. We change it from include in report to add a keyword, add negative keyword at the ad group level, and let's add it as an exact match this time around. And with that, we can say that the search query management strategy is ready. As easy as that. So let's have a look at the results now by clicking the view suggestions button. Once in the results page, you'll see a left sidebar with the list of campaigns where we found the results, as well as the rules that were triggered. In this case, we found three non-converting search queries and one converting search query. You can also adjust the custom variables here to use it as a filter and update the list of results based on that. Once you reviewed your results, you can click automate to start running this in the background every day, week, or month. You can select multiple days of the month as well, as well as multiple days of the week, Mondays and Wednesdays, for example. If you want to receive the results via email, whenever the rule engine finds something, you can use the send notifications option. You can also export results to a Google spreadsheet, apply the changes automatically, or just add an alert to the alerts page. You can also send the results manually as an email. You can apply the changes right away, just like any of our other one-click optimizations, or you could use a download button to download a CSV, export the results to a Google spreadsheet, or download a Google Ads editor format file. Now that you know how Rule it works, let's go back to the strategy and see a couple of additional tricks. If we click settings, you'll see a menu to quickly access some of the features we already saw, like custom variables and custom date ranges. 
In other types of strategies, for example, keyword or campaign level, you'll see an option to connect external data. This will let you connect a Google Sheet document to a rule engine to use data that is not available by default in Optimizer. You'll find more examples of external data integration in the Help Center and other videos. One more trick to make the tool faster when you're running it on very big accounts are the pre-filters. Because here you can say only run this strategy on search queries that have received over zero impressions. This reduces the amount of data that the tool will need to analyze. In here, you also have the option to say only run this on campaigns that are enabled or old but removed, as well as other items statuses. Let's save this. And well, as you can see, Rulindian is a great way to turn your own secret sauce of how you manage ads into a scalable, repeatable, and automatable optimization.